All right, cool. So we have finally finished installing it. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, please check the link in the chat. I'll drop it one more time um, because we are going to be on YouTube with the screen sharing. So definitely check that out if you want to see this whole um, basically build of a counter. Um, and again, we're doing a counter just because it's a really like sort of recommended thing to know how to do before you go into a job interview. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So when you use Create React App, it actually gives you a lot of like tools that you're able to see basically, um, you know, it gives you instructions about what you're supposed to do. So they literally tell you, we suggest you begin by typing CD counter, CD, which stands for change directory. Um, I'm not really going to get into the terminal and things like that. I do have videos on that on both my TikTok and my YouTube channel if you want to check those out. So we're going to type in CD counter. It's going to change the directory. So now we're in our counter folder and then we're going to hit NPM start. And that's going to start spinning up our React app. And now that counter folder that we just changed directory into, that's actually this one over on the left here, the one that says counter at the top. And you'll see that it has a whole bunch of different files in here. Um, while we wait for that to spin up, you'll see that we'll get some different messages down here. And then we've like compiled it su successfully. Um, so you can see that we can see the counter in the browser over on the right here at localhost 3000, which is this URL up at the top right here. So this is just allowing us to develop locally on our computer. As I said, it's a really just quick way to get up and going if you want to just sort of like um, proof a concept and, you know, see how things are working in React or really just test out React for yourself. All right, so let's get started. Um, so if you've never worked with React, this is like the page that gets spun up every time you use Create React app. Um, it has a whole bunch of different like pieces, logo, text, etc. We're not going to use any of that. What we're going to do actually is hop into the folders over here and sort of wipe all of that and start with a clean slate. So if we go into the top left here, we go into our source folder and then we head down to app.js. Um, app.js is basically where all of this stuff is living. And what we can do right here is we can take a look at app.js. So we see that it's a uh, functional component right here. Um, you know, it's importing a couple of different things. It's importing logo, um, which is a spinning logo right here. It's importing some CSS, which accounts for the stylings on the page right now. Um, and then it has, you know, just a, a div with some information in the middle. If you haven't worked with um, React before, it's a combination. Well, it uses JSX, which is a combination of JavaScript and HTML. Um, so you're kind of seeing that on the page right now where you have this function, but it's returning HTML. So it's really funky if you've never worked with it before, but I think it's pretty cool. So anyway, what we're going to do now is just get rid of all of this piece in the middle here. And we're going to save that. And as you'll see, we have nothing on our app right now. So that means we've done something right, hopefully. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and build out our counter. So when you get asked to build a counter, they're not really going to be looking for like crazy stylings or anything like that. We can add a couple of little styles to make our thing look a little bit better. But for the most part, you want to just do something that's going to be logically functional. Um, first thing I'm going to do here is actually change this into, well, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to create a folder here called components. Um, this is just a habit of mine that I always create a components folder and then I put everything in the components folder, just sort of like keep my code organized. Um, if it's a larger project, you'll see like folders within folders within the component folder. Um, but for now it's just one folder. So I'm going to create a new file now and I'm going to call that counter. So this is where our counter is actually going to live. Um, and this file that I'm creating here, it's a, um, it's going to be a react component. And so react is built on this idea of reusable components, these reusable pieces of code that are um, basically very modular in nature and allows you to sort of build apps and scale very quickly, um, as opposed to sort of like building pieces individually and then copying and pasting them and modifying them as necessary. Um, we can sort of be a little bit more um, semantic in the way we do things. So I'm um, building the counter, I'm actually going to use a little, um, Emmet function, I believe it is called R A F C E. Sorry, ES seven snippets um, that basically creates an arrow function based on the title of the file. It's pretty cool. Um, so if I hit that, it's actually going to build out a functional component um, based on the title of the file, which is counter, and then it's going to return just um, a div with counter in it and it export the counter um, component itself. So super quick. That was like a really quick way to make a component. Down here back, if I hop back over to app, I'm actually just going to import it now and it'll actually auto import if I start typing it out like um, an element. And you can see right here, it's like offered to import it from dot slash component slash counter. So I can just bring that in there and save. All right. And if you look over on the right here, you'll see that we actually have the counter popped up already. So we're in a good place. It's actually working. Um, we know that we've like connected our uh, pieces correctly. 
Awesome. So the next thing we want to do, right, in our counter example, um, we have this like zero and then we have a plus and we have a minus. Um, we might even add a reset button just to be like, you know, really useful. The plus is green, the minus is red. We don't have to do that, but we can. Um, but first things first, we're going to need, so we're going to need three things. We're going to need the, the, at least two buttons and we're going to need a display for the count. So, um, in let's, let's do an H1. Oops. Let's do an H1 here with the, just the title of the page. We'll keep that counter. And then below this, we're going to do the actual count. So I'm just going to do, um, let's do an H2 with a zero in it for now. And then we're going to do two buttons. So we're going to do button and this is plus one. And then we're going to do a second button here, which is minus one. I save that. All right, cool. So we have our zero, we have plus one and we have minus one. Awesome. Um, next thing we're going to want to do is like make it do something, right? Cause like right now when I click plus one and minus one, absolutely nothing happens. So um, let's hook it up and actually take advantage of, you know, why part of the reason why we're using React. So one awesome thing that React allows us to work with is state. Um, and I have some videos on my website about state and how to work with state and what state is. But in a nutshell, state is essentially like the actual like current representation of what something is. Um, so let me put it into place and then maybe you can ask questions if you have questions after um, I've sort of given you an example of it. So um, what we want to do here is initialize a variable that we can basically use to represent um, this actual count, this zero over here, right? So even before we start talking about state, if I were to go uh, const count equals zero and then just replace this zero right here with count and save that, you'll notice that the value actually hasn't changed because we've just literally replaced the zero we had with the zero. If I changed it to 100, you'll see that it changes to 100. So we're just using a variable um, to give it, you know, whatever number we want to do. So we can now use that variable and assign different values to that variable much more easily than like literally manually putting in zero, one, two, three, et cetera, right? So where state comes into this is we can actually sort of hook in to this variable and set the state, set the, the value of this variable um, based on what's going on in the app. So um, what I want to do now is import a hook called use state from React. And a hook is essentially just a, a function that React, um, or we can create per customized hook, but in this case, React has created for us and we're going to utilize and leverage some of its functionality. So uh, when I create my hook called use state, I can now attach it to my count variable here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put square brackets around count. So the first half of the use state hook um, the, or the, the variable that we're initializing here is count. So we're creating a variable called count. And then we're also creating something called set count, which is actually going to be a function. And how that works is we will take the use state hook, oops, use state, and we're going to wrap our variable with it. And based on that, um, that sort of convention, that, uh, naming structure, React knows that count is going to be our variable. So the first part is going to be our variable. And then the second part set count is actually going to be our function. Um, so it's going to allow us to actually set the value of count. They're kind of, con they're connected in a way. Um, so we have our count, we have our set count, but still nothing's happening. We haven't hooked it up yet. Let's do that. So we know that when we click on the button, the plus one button, we're going to want to add one to the count, right? And also from our HTML and our JavaScript, we know that the buttons have a property called on click. So what we're going to do is create an on click and then on click, we want it to do something, right? So on click, we want it to set the count and then we don't want it to just be one, right? We don't want to just set the count to one and that's it, right? No, we want to set the count to whatever the count currently is plus one and save that. And so now if we've done it right, when we click plus one, it should just increment by one. Awesome. But we can't decrement it now. So let's set up the other half. So again, going into the next button, this is minus one. Now we're going to set another on click equals, and then we're going to call set count. And this time again, grabbing that count variable. So whatever it is, as it's 14 now, I want to grab it at 14. That is the current state of the count variable, right? I want to grab count and then subtract one every time this button is clicked. And so then if I flipped it up correctly, when I hit minus one, it should subtract one. Awesome. Really good. So 
we have the minus one, we have the plus one, it's working pretty well. What if we wanted to actually um, start from zero every time? So say I'm at 10 and I don't wanna, like I've counted to 10, I wanna start from zero again. That's where a reset button could be really useful. So if I go ahead, let me wrap these two in a div just to make them look a little bit prettier when I do this. I'm gonna create one last button and we're gonna create, so let's create the button, and we're gonna call it reset. And we're gonna save that so it should pop up right underneath. Good. Next thing we're gonna do is add that on click function now, right? So we're gonna go on click equals. And then this one's gonna be a little bit different. We're still gonna call set count, but instead of it being count plus one, count plus zero, because it's a reset, we really don't care what count is. We just want count to be a certain value. So we're gonna click set count to be zero. And so if we hook this up correctly, when we hit set count, or when we hit, sorry, when we hit reset, it should set count to be zero. Awesome. And then let's just double check. Our plus one is working, our minus one is working, and our reset is bringing us to zero. So that's like a super, super, super quick way to create a counter. As I said, we could add styles and we could do this and that and the other um, to make it look sort of a bit more pretty. Um, we could wrap things in different divs and use Flexbox and whatever, right? Um, bunch of stuff we could do. Not all of it is strictly necessary in terms of this as an interview question. As an interview question, this is sort of the most uh, uh, interview is, interviewer is probably gonna ask you. The reset button might be their like extra bonus because you know when you go into a tech interview, usually what they ask you to do is to build one thing and then to sort of like add on to it and um, you know do something additional. So you wanna make sure that you actually do the first thing well and it works. So we, we did our plus one and we minus one and it worked well. And then you do that add on, that, that reset button is like your additional piece. All right, let me take any questions that we have in the comments here, if any at all. All right, we've gotten a hi, hi. All right, no, no questions? Cool. All right, cool. If there are no questions, then hopefully I've explained things clearly. All right, but if you do have any questions, um, please hit me up. Um, you can definitely check out my YouTube channel where this is gonna be hosted on after. Um, so you can actually see you know, how to do this, you can replay it. Um, I also have a bit more of an in-depth course on my website about how to actually um, build a counter, how to style it, how to break things into separate components. Um, it's a bit more of like a step-by-step -step tutorial in how to work with React. Um, so you can definitely check that out as well. The website is davidsonprogrammingacademy.com. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message, shoot me an email. Um, I have a front end bootcamp up for sale right now. Um, basically it's an opportunity to work with a front end mentor like myself and work through from, you know, you can know absolutely nothing about coding all the way to getting a job. We're gonna work through the entire process, HTML, CSS, React, um, JavaScript, you know, even setting up your own GitHub account, working through mock interviews. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in any of that, um, definitely reach out to me. You can schedule a free 15 minute call with me if you go to the website and hit the contact me button. Um, yeah, I'm open and available if you wanna chat. All right, thanks for taking the time. I'll see you in the next one.